So good morning everyone. This is the first YouTube video of University of Cebu, PAIS. So to start, we are going to discuss the plumbing code part 1. Part 1 will be about its history and the 22 basic principles. Plumbing is the art and technique of installing pipes, fixtures, and other apparatuses in buildings for bringing in the supply of liquids, substances, and or ingredients and removing them, and such, water, liquid, and other carried waste hazardous to health, sanitation, life, and property. Also, the pipes and fixtures after insulation. An example, the plumbing system. History of the plumbing practice in the Philippines In 1902, the plumbing trade was duly recognized by the government in the city of Manila. Master Plumber John F. Haas became the first chief of the Division of Plumbing Construction and Inspection. A plumbing code based on the Plumbing Code of the United States was incorporated into the Building Code for the City of Manila. In 1935, the National Master Plumbers Association of the Philippines, or NAMPAP, was formally organized. Manila City Ordinance 2411, the plumbing code for the City of Manila, was enacted and placed under the Department of Public Services in Manila. In 1954, the Third Congress approved House Bill No. 962, which in June 18, 1955 became RA 1378, commonly known as the Plumbing Law of the Philippines, upon ratification of President Ramon Magsaysay. In January 28, 1959, the National Plumbing Code of the Philippines prepared by Nam Pap was promulgated and approved by Malacanang. Before martial law in 1972, Republic Act No. 6541, otherwise known as the Building Code of the Philippines, was passed with the National Plumbing Code of 1959 as referral code in full text. The Professional Regulation Commission, or PRC, adopted the Revised Plumbing Code of 1999, which President Joseph Estrada approved December 21, 1999, pursuant to Section 4 of RA 1378, known as the Plumbing Law. Twenty-two basic principles of the plumbing code. First, all premises intended for human use or habitation shall be provided with a supply of pure and wholesome water, neither connected to unsafe water supply nor subject to backflow or back siphonage. Second, plumbing fixtures, devices, and appurtenances shall be supplied with water in sufficient volume and pressure, adequate to function satisfactorily and without undue noise. Third, Plumbing shall be designed and adjusted to use the minimum quantity of water consistent with proper performance and cleaning. Fourth, devices for heating and storing water shall be so designed and installed as to prevent dangers from explosion through overheating. Fifth, every building abutting on a street, alley, or easement with a public sewer shall connect its plumbing fixtures to the sewer system. Six, each family dwelling unit shall have at least one water closet, one kitchen type sink, a lavatory, and a bathtub or shower to meet the basic requirements of sanitation and personal hygiene. Seventh, plumbing fixtures shall be made of smooth, non-absorbent material, free from concealed falling surfaces, and shall be located in ventilated enclosures. Eighth, the drainage system shall be designed, constructed, and maintained to safeguard against fouling, deposit of solids, clogging, and with adequate clean-outs, so arranged that the pipes may be readily cleaned. Ninth, all piping shall be of durable non pop approved materials, free from defective workmanship, designed and constructed by registered master plumbers to ensure satisfactory service. Ten, each fixture directly connected to the drainage system shall be equipped with a water-sealed trap. Eleven, the drainage pipes piping system shall be designed to provide adequate circulation of air free from siphonage, aspiration, or forcing of trap seals under ordinary use. Twelfth, vent terminal shall extend to the outer air and is installed to prevent clogging and the return of foul air to the building. Thirteenth, master plumbing systems shall be subjected to such tests to effectively disclose all leaks and defects in the workmanship. Fourteenth, 
substance which will clog the pipes, produce explosive mixtures, destroy the pieces or their joints, or interfere unduly with the sewage disposal process, shall not be allowed to enter the building drainage system. 15. Proper protection shall be provided to prevent contamination of food, water, sterile goods, and similar materials by backflow of sewage. When necessary, the fixture, device, or appliance shall be connected indirectly with the building drainage system. 16. No water closet shall be located in a room or compartment which is not properly lighted and ventilated. 17. If there is no sewer system in the area, suitable provision shall be made for the disposal of public sewage by some accepted method of sewage treatment and disposal, such as a septic tank. 18. Where a plumbing drainage system may be subject to backflow of sewage, suitable provisions shall be made to prevent its overflow in the building. 19. Plumbing systems shall be maintained in serviceable condition by registered master plumbers. 20. All plumbing fixtures shall be installed properly spaced to be accessible for their intended use. 21. Plumbing shall be installed with due regard to the preservation of the strength of structural members and the prevention of damage to walls and other surfaces through fixture usage. 22. Sewage or other waste from plumbing system which may be deleterious to surface or subsurface waters shall not be discharged into the ground or into any waterway unless first rendered innocuous through subjection to some acceptable form of treatment. That ends our discussion. Plumbing Code Part 1, Plumbing History and the 22 Basic Principles. Don't forget to share, like, and comment below. Thank you, and this is the first video of the University of Cebu, Pi's Plumbing Code.